John Bidipolitan, thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Great to have you aboard tonight. And more fallout tonight. I can't believe it's still more fallout from uh, Danny Masterson, that 70s show star who was found guilty on two counts of forcible rape and sentenced last Thursday to 30 years for life. Well, something that we covered last week, um, two of his friends, co-stars from that show, didn't come to court to speak on his behalf, but submitted letters in support of Danny Masterson. We got copies of those letters. Let's take a listen. To the Honorable Judge Olmedo, I am writing this character letter on behalf of my dear friend, Danny Masterson, with whom I have had the privilege of sharing a significant part of my life. My name is Mila Kunis. I first met Danny during our time working together on that 70s show, and from the very beginning, I could sense his innate goodness and genuine nature. His genuine concern for those around him and his commitment to leading by example make him an outstanding role model and friend. Moreover, Danny has consistently displayed a profound sense of responsibility and care for those around him. He demonstrates grace and empathy in every situation, be it within the entertainment industry or in our personal lives. His steady support and understanding presence make him a reliable source of guidance and comfort for all of us. In conclusion, I wholeheartedly vouch for Danny Masterson's exceptional character and the tremendous positive influence he has had on me and the people around him. His dedication to leading a drug-free life and the genuine care he extends to others make him an outstanding role model and friend. Sincerely, Mila Kunis. Honorable Judge Olmedo, my name is Ashton Kutcher. I'm an actor, investor, philanthropist, and most importantly, a father. I met Danny Masterson when I was 20 years old in 1998. He instantly became a friend, dedicated co-worker, and role model to me, and has remained as such for 25 years. As a friend, Danny has been nothing but a positive influence on me. He's an extraordinarily honest and intentional human being. Over our 25-year relationship, I don't ever recall him lying to me. He's taught me about being direct and confronting issues in life and relationships head on, resolving them and moving forward. As a role model, Danny has consistently been an excellent one. I attribute not falling into the typical Hollywood life of drugs directly to Danny. He has always treated people with decency, equality, and generosity. While I'm aware that the judgment has been cast as guilty on two counts of rape by force and the victims have a great desire for justice, I hope that my testament to his character is taken into consideration in sentencing. I do not believe he is an ongoing harm to society, and having his daughter raised without a present father would be a tertiary injustice in and of itself. Thank you for taking the time to read this. Best, Ashton Kutcher. Okay, so those letters were submitted on, on behalf of a defendant. It happens in all cases, it just happens in this case. He's a, a celebrity, and they're big-time celebrities as well. So there was a little bit of um, response from the public to this because they are supporting someone who's a convicted forcible rapist. Okay? Now, I understand. And, and I mean, this happens all the time. I mean, defendants get people to come to court and speak on their behalf or submit letters on their behalf. But this is very public. I don't know if they knew that this was very public. It's a public trial, a public case, public records. So as a result of all the uh, negative feedback that Ashton and Mila were getting, they went on to Instagram to issue some sort of a statement, maybe an explanation, maybe an apology. I think it's up for interpretation. Let's take a listen. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read. 
um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, or rape. Now, like, if you are Danny Masterson's victim and you're accusing him of, of rape, you know, you're going to look at this much differently. And if you are a victim or a victim's advocate, you may look at it much more differently. Me, I looked at it like, okay, I get it. You're standing up for your friend. I was saying it from the beginning. Is anyone coming to court for Danny Masterson? Is anyone coming to court for him? And, and Mila and Ashton didn't come to court, but they did submit these letters. So I understand it's part of the process. Um, now, got to get into something else here now. Ashton Kutcher was also a witness in, in a murder case. You may or may not remember this. Back in uh, 2019, um, pretty famous case, Michael Gargiulio, the Hollywood Ripper, um, was someone who was tried and convicted of killing Ashley Ellerin, stabbing her 48 times. Um, this is Ashton's former girlfriend, and he was supposed to go on a date with her that night, okay? So keep that in perspective. He's supposed to go on a date with the victim of the Hollywood Ripper. Now, he's not connected to the crime in this case, but was a witness to all of it. Meanwhile, Chrissy Bixler, who is... Danny Masterson's former girlfriend and an accuser in one of the counts in the rape case. Now, he, he was not convicted of raping her. The jury was hung on that count, but he, she is an accuser of Danny Masterson's. She was really upset by Ashton and the letter that he submitted to the court, and she posted something on her Instagram story the next day. Take a look here. It says, Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your, quote, role model keeps for you, ones that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. I hear everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your, quote, mentor. 2001 is the murder of Ashley Ellerin. What's going on here? What the heck is going on here? Like, this is, this, I mean, this is really getting deep into it, right? So Ashton, who's a, a witness in that case because he's supposed to go on a date with his girlfriend that night and she ends up getting murdered by the Hollywood Ripper, but he makes a call to Danny Masterson and she hears it? I'm not clear, it's not clear. It's, it's not clear, but let's bring in our think tank tonight to go through some of this. Joining us tonight, there she is in Gainesville, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Shandell Summer. Also joining us tonight in Stanford, Connecticut, criminal defense attorney Darnell Crossland. Jennifer Brandt will be joining us. We just had a little connection problem with her. So, um, all right, Shandell, Darnell, you are with us tonight, I believe. They, I'm with yeah, you. Just, Good evening. Okay. Just, just got off a flight, came straight to you. Okay, fantastic. Um, <laughs> I have a question. Let's talk about these letters in support of convicted criminals and rapists. Shandell, what are your thoughts about um, people who are providing letters of support for convicted forcible rapists? Um, should they be ostracized for this? Should they be thought of poorly for doing this? I believe that in this situation, good evening, Denny, uh, that I liked Myla Kunis and Ashton Kushner a lot more before their apology video, uh, which looked very canned and robotic and like a slick Hollywood kind of just rolled out of bed type of production. Um, I think that, you know, standing up for your friend, no matter what they do, is not a bad character trait. So uh, they could have just said, you know, we're not here necessarily to say that he didn't do it. We're just here to say that our experience with him has been very positive in the past. But I think the interesting thing about this case, because I uh, did a little research into the difference between the first trial, which was a mistrial, and the second trial, which was a conviction, is that the judge allowed testimony about 
um, the victims being drugged in the second trial, which was not part of the first trial. So same set of circumstances, but in the second trial, they talked about how uh, the victims were drugged, and there was really no evidence of that other than the victim's testimony that they felt disoriented after having a drink. So the part of the thing that my lacunas has been um, on Instagram in the last few days has been talking about how that 70s show set was drug-free and how she learned not to use drugs when she was on that show. So I wondered what the connection was, but now I think it's probably to support this, um, what is sure to be an alleged error in the trial, that the court allowed that testimony about uh, the victims being drugged. It could be a significant appellate issue if that becomes the whole deal. Um, so that's interesting. That's interesting that, that that became a big part. Uh, Darnell, is it difficult to get people to either show up to court or write letters in support of convicted criminals, convicted <laughs> rapists? Well, first of all, um, I went to school in Georgia, so I'm wondering, is Gainesville, Georgia famous for chicken? I think so. It is, um, poultry capital of the is. world. <laughs> that's what I that's what I remember it. I was trying to remember Gainesville and Akron, all, all that stuff. But 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 Finney, to your question, um, you know and I you and I differ a bit. I, I there's no such thing for me as convicted criminals. There's there's people who the jury might have found guilty just and they may be exonerated later. The people who come off uh, doing 40, 70 years in jail for rape and they find out they didn't even do it. So the people that, that the jury might have found guilty. And um, even people who are found not guilty aren't found innocent. So in this particular case, the burden of proof was met. They found him guilty. However, he's still entitled to mitigation. And so his friends and colleagues, they're saying that uh, the person they knew um, was this person, and they outline that. So as, as our guest says, they could have said that what they knew of him is not commensurate with his his behavior articulated in the trial. And they're here to share that. And so they should not be ostracized. And I, I do also agree with our guests that um, the 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 doubling back or, or, or going on to make the statement, I think it just came off as disingenuous and trying to be uh, pleasing to all people. Um, so they didn't owe anything to victims. They never said there was no victims. They just was talking about his character. So um, I think the letters are acceptable. They're commonplace in the, in the uh, bifurcated system, which is guilt and innocence, and then sentencing, punishment. So it, it's, it was on point, and I don't think that they did anything wrong with those letters. All right, Jennifer Brent has joined us, family law attorney in Philly. Great to see you, Jennifer. Um, what are your thoughts, Jennifer, about the Chrissy Bixler post? This is Danny Masterson's former girlfriend, accuser, not convicted in that case, but she's seemingly saying, Ashton, you did something wrong and I know it. Yeah, Vinny, I, I think that, um, I think she is speaking from, from her genuine heart about how she feels. And, you know, she saw these posts, she's a victim, and she wanted to express what she felt. And she thought it was so wrong for them to, you know, speak out in his favor, knowing he's, being, he's been convicted. I'm here. Uh, Shandell, let me ask you, what do you yeah. think What do you think about these accusations by Chrissy Bixler towards Ashton Kutcher? It, should, should there be some investigation here if this was, and, and I don't know, I don't know if this, if this investigation would help the convicted Hollywood Ripper or someone else, but it seems like there's more to this story than maybe everyone knows. Well, of course, as you pointed out, Vinny, Chrissy Bixler is the one count that the jury was hung up on. There was a mistrial declared in the allegations made by Ms. Bixler. So she's obviously bitter um, from that particular outcome, I would think. And I think it really calls into credibility or calls into question her credibility. The fact that she says, I heard the plan, um, you know, it would be the end of you. And that sort of suggests that he had something to do with the murder. I think I don't, I, I, I don't know what it means. Do, do you think, though, that someone representing the Hollywood Ripper on, on one of these appeals might reach out to, to uh, Chrissy Bixler? I, I Ashton think was, that, a, was, a, was a witness in the case. 
I mean, I think I don't know that much about the facts and circumstances behind the conviction of the Hollywood Ripper. But I would say if I'm at Ashton Kushner, I'm looking for a defamation lawsuit at this point Woo! because she's suggested he had something to do with the murders. And I don't know if she was suggesting that. I am certainly not suggesting that. I'm just putting up what she is making some sort of accusation here uh, that there might be more to the story. We shall see. Wow. Okay.